When building a medium to large caliber rifle, it's important to reinforce the stock to prevent splitting. This is a pretty straightforward process, and let's take a look. All wood stocks can be made stronger by reinforcing the areas behind the recoil lug and in front of the trigger. You'll see this reinforcement on many World War I and II military rifles, such as this Mauser 98. And Remington has traditionally installed a small threaded rod in front of the trigger cut on their stocks. When the energy gets up to 375 H&H levels of 4,000 foot-pounds or more, it's generally a requirement to reinforce these areas to prevent them from splitting under recoil, such as on this unreinforced pre-64 Winchester Model 70. There are two methods of reinforcing the stock. The first is what we call cross bolts, so named because this method employs one or two bolts secured crosswise in the stock, like on this Kimber 375 H&H. We call these exposed cross bolts because you can see the head of each bolt. Some stock makers prefer covered cross bolts, so they cover the heads with wooden plugs. While still others use a brass discussion with an ebony plug inside, providing a little extra class. One note is that if you are applying a hard synthetic finish as a top coat to protect the wood, you'll get some slight cracking around brass discussions over time as the brass doesn't expand and contract with changes in humidity as the wood does. Notice this 460 Weatherby stock has no exposed cross bolts, but rather pockets machined behind the recoil lug and in front of the trigger. This is the second method of reinforcing the stock. In the front pocket, a piece of all thread is epoxied into place, along with a horseshoe-shaped steel strap epoxied in front of the trigger. Weatherby has been using this method quite successfully for many years. We're going to install these cross bolts made here in the shop. They consist of a 1032 screw and two brass cups. One slips over the screw and is captured by the screw head and the other is threaded. Both ends are covered with ebony plugs. We begin by marking the location of the front and rear holes. Then measure the distance from the top rails to the top of the wood we plan to reinforce and mark that on the stock. These holes will need to be just under the wood inside the stock. With the stock leveled in a mill vise, I can drill the through holes. Each hole is then counterbored for the escutcheon. The counterbore should only be about 350 thousandths deep. A plug cutter and chisel are used to make the ebony plugs. Now I can simply mix up some epoxy and black dye, place the dollop in the stock, and drop in the thread of discussion. A bit of masking tape holds it in place while I flip the stock and install the other. After adding epoxy to the screw, I push it in through the escutcheon and turn it in place. All that's left is to glue in the ebony plugs and clamp them in place. Once everything's set up, I secure the stock using a horse and file off the excess with a babbit file to prevent brass shavings from embedding in the grain. These cross bolts will never come loose and will help the stock hold up under heavy recoil. 